This week we get touchy feely with new devices from Apple to point and click all your things. Some awesome events happening around Pittsburgh. Jetpack Joyride and Back to the Future celebration, video calling, and quantifying yourself. So much more awesome cast. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast episode 270. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Ready to talk tech from a Pittsburgh Steel City state of mind. With me from Studio B, a well-lit Studio B. You're really getting the hang of this, man. It's looking good. I think you look as good as I do in remote. Oh, nice. Perfect. I'm, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep working on it. We're going to keep trying to improve the home studio. I got a little cabinet here. So I think next week we're going to try potentially a new microphone. Man, eventually it's going to be basic uh, chillonomics is going to be uh, broadcast <laughs> from over there. It's going to be great, you know. Uh, I you know I wouldn't mind if that becomes a series. <laughs> to be quite honest, <laughs> I want I, I do want to do a, a a review show, but I, I want to get a couple couple recorded and get your feedback before we Hell yeah we start pumping that out there. Put it out there, and Sorgatron Media Network is growing. It's growing. <laughs> it's nice to have shows that I'm not hosting on the network like panel Riot, mm-hmm. for instance. I mean, I mean, I, it, Will's been doing a great job over there with panel Riot.com, and he's been growing. He's, he's reaching 50 episodes, but this is, you know what? That's the rest of the stuff. This is about technology. And, uh, if you want to hear about podcasting and stuff, we usually talk about that over in basics, ergonomics and some other places. Uh, but, uh, this is awesome cast. You can check us out at awesomecast.net as I bump my mic there. Uh, excuse me. And, uh, check out awesomecast.net. Subscribe to us on iTunes. Um, and, and of course all the social medias, YouTube's, uh, audio and video form formats all linked right there at awesomecast.net and you can drop us a line uh, at, at any of those twitters awesomecast of course or anywhere else or the email address awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com we do have an email actually tonight of an awesome thing of the week from alex cars that we'll be getting to in a little bit uh but also if you want to support the show uh please check us out patreon.com slash awesomecast and we have some fun fun prizes and i gotta say uh uh you know, officially, Chilla, you know, last week we introduced the executive producer level on the Patreon, mm-hmm. which means after four consecutive uh, uh, marks at the executive producer level, which is a $5 per episode uh, pledge, I will send you business cards that say, awesome cast, executive producer, yet to be designed. We won't say that on the <laughs> card. I just haven't designed them yet. Uh, but I, I think after after the Patreons go through at the end of this month, we might have a couple people getting some cards in the mail. So big thanks to our friends up there in Cranberry Township, PA. This will see business development at this will see on the Twitters. And also our new friend, our lady, latest Patreon supporter, our latest patron, uh, that is, of course, Michael Fedor of the Michael Fedor Show. Uh, it's uh, done some great talks at PodCamp Pittsburgh. There's some stuff online about um, um, online game, not online gaming, but like Let's Play videos uh, from PodCamp Pittsburgh 9. If you go on there, you can check out him talking about that. And check out the video stuff he's doing, twitter.com slash Mike Fedor Show. And he's got uh, everything linked from there. Thank you so much for supporting the show. You are our awesome patrons. And we really, really appreciate it here. Uh, so, and if you can't, if you can't give a couple bucks, give a penny, whatever the case may be, Please consider just sharing the show, telling your friends about it, all your tech friends, all your non-tech friends. Um, I understand some less than techy people are enjoying this show because uh, uh, Chilla apparently apparently it, it, it heartens people when you and I can't figure something out. Uh, so it's really it's really good to see that we're <laughs> we're providing that service. It's like, the, well, I'm confused about this dang darn thing. Uh, <laughs> that's how we talk sometimes on this show, I guess. You know. Um, but anyways, uh, so so we like to start off with your awesome thing of the week. And you guys, of course, can please, please submit in, in the chat room, live.awesomecast. Wait, wait, I'm not sure that works. I should double check that. Live.sorgatronmedia.com um, or, or you can go to awesomecast.net. We do have a link because I think I saw that live.awesomecast.net may be broken. Uh, so I need to go follow up on that. So bear with me on that. But anyways, you can join us. Let us know your awesome thing, thing of the week in the chat room. A bunch of people are joining us, including uh, Alex Cars out there in Cali. Crazy Kraus is joining us and our good friend Hot Wheels and a couple other guest names popping in there. I think I'm Virginia because I give you a random name and I keep getting Virginia. Uh, <laughs> so I, I'm pretty sure that's my other computer over here. So uh, Juggalo John joins us as well and a very often uh, supporter of and contributor to 
the awesome cast. So let's get into it uh, with our awesome things of the week. Chilla, let's start with your things. Things? And we that? have things. We have multiple things, things have, more or less. Things. Yes. So Apple made a couple announcements. I'm pretty sure it was today. Um, I know they announced a new new iMac. Um, but one of the things that I've been waiting for... Wait, wait, for side note. Is... I'm sorry. So side note. Uh, the one thing I saw about the new iMac come across the stream was new iMac takes shot from Canon. And I thought at first they were talking about cameras. Then I realized it was spelled. Apparently they shot it with a Canon. <laughs> like a Canon. Com- <laughs> no, like like a Canon. Like, oh. like, like, like they, they shot like, it boom. with a Canon. Like, yes, boom, Canon. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't follow up on that, but it just like kind of came across my feet. Anyways, but this is the stuff that you're not shooting at, hopefully. Yes, I'm, I'm definitely not shooting at this one. Um, so along with their new, some of their new hardware today, they did announce um, kind of between, between the lines um, a new keyboard, a new Magic Mouse, and a new trackpad. Um, I'm actually in probably in the market for a new keyboard soon, so I'm interested in taking a look at this one. It actually has a very interesting wedge design versus kind of the bubble in the back. Um, the new Magic Mouse is um, a little is has been updated, um, and then the trackpad adds force touch. Um, obviously, this does add cost um, to the device to to the touchpad. Um, up from sixty nine dollars, it's now one twenty nine. The mouse costs seventy nine, and the keyboard costs ninety nine. Um, I'm not as interested in the mouse because I already have a mouse, a Magic Mouse, and I'm pretty happy with it. The other thing that I actually um, modified or or got some extra equipment along with my mouse, and my mouse is already rechargeable, and my mouse actually recharges by putting it down on a a pad. Um, so the bottom of my mouse has a replacement. Um, battery compartment. Yeah. And I just put it down on that pad. But the big deal to me is after using force touch more and more and more, um, or 3d touch force touch what I, on the, on the iPhone and on my watch, um, the new trackpad adds the same capability. Um, so that's big for me. I, I'm looking forward to testing that out, obviously in an Apple store, seeing how that works, see, make sure it feels the same and then quickly, um, going out and grabbing one of those. The other interesting thing that they did with all of their devices, um, which if you're familiar with those devices today, um, all those devices take uh, AA batteries. So there's a there's on the bottom of the mouse, there's a spot for two batteries on the bottom of the keyboard or in the back of the keyboard, depending on how early you got your device and model. Um, I think there's three, three to four batteries in the keyboard. And the trackpad has two. Um, all devices are now rechargeable with built-in batteries that are that don't seem, from what I'm seeing in the specs, replaceable. Um, but interestingly enough, the port that they chose to put on them for recharging is actually a lightning port. So Ooh. if you have your phone cord, um, you can actually recharge your keyboard, trackpad, or mouse. Which is actually, an, I'm, I'm interested to see how this all fits together, because I actually have a a dock for my phone. Which, if the mouse fits nicely on the dock in an upright position, um, which, here, let me see if I can pull this out. If you see my phone, it sits on a, a pedestal stand. So if I can if I can get my mouse on there, I would actually contemplate getting the mouse just to have it look cool. But if not, I'm probably just going to go with the, um, the the keyboard and potentially trackpad. Trackpad first, followed up by the keyboard. Hmm. I like this. I so I you know I'm always iffy when it comes to wireless. I, I have a the wireless mouse uh, at, at my one uh, employer employer client. I guess uh, it feels like because I go in like regularly one day a week, and it's like it's my only like day jobby thing that I do. Uh, and uh, and we've had the wireless keyboard, and I've actually had problems with it. I actually fell out of sync. I've never been able to get it back. Um, so that's been interesting. Uh, but but I like this idea, and especially the trackpad. I've wanted a trackpad for my Mac Mini upstairs for whenever I need to do to work on it for a while. Um, and and now I'm glad I waited that it's going to have the force features. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking I'm actually, I may migrate some of my hardware to work just so I don't have to carry anything back and forth. Um, my older equipment going to work and my newer equipment being at home, we'll see how that works out. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I, like I said, I'm, I'm looking forward, especially at home. I work with the MacBook Pro lid shut. Um, so having that mm -hmm. forced touch um, is definitely going to come in handy. Is and I, I'm learning more and more to use it. Is it a good idea, side note, is it a good idea to have that lid slut, yeah, slut shut? Um, because, I mean, doesn't that kind of add heat to the screen? Is that, a, is that an issue? Or a I haven't seen an issue in the way they have the back end, that black bar area mm -hmm. cut now. It kind of lets air out the back. Okay. Um, I, w I will say to your point, um, if I'm rendering video or something like that, it, it's, actually, it's, it's actually very odd. I'm probably not your typical use case. I'm at my desk when I'm working for work, which is low process or low memory intensive. I'm up here for the show, which is typically low process or um, low memory intensive. When I'm actually working on video, I'm usually on my couch. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so like right now I'm plugged into this huge monitor, right? If I, if I were to edit video and, and hit render, or, or save or whatever to, to actually render the video, I would grab the laptop and take it with me and open it up. But it's it's not based on the fact, to your point, am I worried about heat? It's just based on how I work. Okay. okay. But, I, but I would guess that the – so for the number of people and companies and advertising that Apple does with the book ARC – which, you know, 12 South, they make the high-rise, the dock that I was just showing, they make all kinds of equipment. High-rise makes the Arc, which is a, a device to set your MacBook closed in, whether it be an Air or Pro or whatever. Um, it's meant to be closed in that position, so I'm guessing it would be okay. Um, I rarely, when doing day-to-day -day normal everyday operations, I rarely hear the fan come on on the pro, on my mini, on most things. Now, like I said, when I'm doing video or doing MPEG encoding, anything like that, yes, it does heat up and the fans do come on. But outside of that, it, it seems like they're doing a very good job with heat dispersion as it is. Awesome. Awesome. So, and, and you got uh, another, another thing linked here, uh, the secret force click shortcuts. Yes. So that was one of the things that, yeah. So in talking about, and let me open up that link myself. Um, in talking about, obviously, the, the now the, now all of the devices that don't have Force Touch today are now you're, you're now going to have that option to get them, whether it's an older MacBook laptop or Air or um, Mini or whatever device you're on, right? Um, you're going to have that force touch capability. So uh, a lot of those capabilities, you can preview a file, you can rename a file. Um, I use the look up a word or preview a website a lot um, when I'm using the browser. So you can, you can look up words, you can preview websites. Um, you can see additional message details. You can see re reminder details, event details. You can add events, you can preview addresses. You can, in maps, you can drop a location pin track packages you can use it to annotate an image or pdf um so and then there's some additional ones out on imore where they show you some some additional siri commands safari shortcuts additional mail keyboard power saving and some secret apple tv controls so i'm really enjoying the the, the force touch on my phone and i find myself now even more than ever trying to force touch on everything on the laptop. So I don't see this going away anytime soon. And I feel like they just gave longevity to a slew of older devices. Certainly you can kind of uh, uh, retrofit a lot of stuff. I can put a lot of, so I'm considering throwing uh, the latest Mac OS on this uh, iMac from 2007, <laughs> but I can really kind of get all those features in there, right? At this point, cause it's right. still up, right? uploads that. I think it's still, um, um, what is it? Not a Yosemite, but it's still a cat. I think it's one of the later cats here, uh, 10.8, which actually would have been the last cat, when I think about it. Um, so I just wanted those features. Like I'm thinking of re re reworking things. So like I don't need to bring my laptop down here to do our iPhone show-off stuff. 
Mm-hmm. So I, I, you know, I'm like, wait, this thing will do it. And I'm not so afraid of maybe losing features or something considering what, what how rudimentary of stuff we, we, we use on it. Like, you know, stuff like, like, like the video stream for you over here or something like that. But, but that I could get us the, the touch features too. That's really freaking intriguing. That's probably like too expensive for something so old that I want to do, but that'd be nice. It'd be nice. All right, uh, so I actually have kind of a slew of things. Uh, my awesome things is, are just like the awesome things happening around Pittsburgh, and I'm actually going to get a little deeper into some of these, I think, on, on other shows. So stay tuned to Basics Organomics, and, and I haven't uh, decided what I'm going to do with one of these. Uh, for, first of all, uh, if you haven't checked it out, uh, check out our interview last week with uh, Looking for Group um, in, uh, in, in Brookline over here. Uh, until I think we talked about them a little bit uh, after the show yet, or last week, but... Um, they're a video game and, um, and, and, and co-working space that they opened up over just, just a little bit over here from, from here in Brookline uh, that you can check out. Uh, you go in, pay like 20 bucks, and they have just a lineup of PS4s, Xbox Ones, and uh, like eight PCs. And they have uh, big loungy setups with, uh, with, with, with Wii U's and all the consoles and everything. Great for like party games or just going in and playing something. Maybe I don't have an Xbox One, so maybe I want to play the latest Call of Duty you know, uh, or, or they actually have some pretty cool, I forget, I forget what it's called. Um, cobalt or something, cobalt or something like that. Uh, that's actually a kind of Star Trek style bridge simulator that takes multiple people and you're, you know, each doing a task and everything like that. Uh, this sounds like, like some really interesting, different games, right? Uh, in, in the back, they have a co-working space. So especially if you're a game developer, a budding game developer and need a place, uh, it's a good, spot for you and, and just have a co-working space in general in the south hills it would be really nice um so uh, i i recommend everybody check it out check out awesome chat over at awesomecast.net where we talked to looking for group um and it's uh lfgpgh.com um and uh lfgpgh on the twitter as well and looking for group you know, pittsburgh is on facebook check them out there's more pictures there's more video i believe their kickstarter is still going if I'm not mistaken, uh, for them to uh, have more stuff, basically just to add more stuff to it. And they have some, some awesome stretch goals, including uh, having the community do a lot of... Um do a lot of uh, uh, raspberry pies for kids and uh, teaching them how to get it going and put an arcade on there and everything. Uh, they're still 175% funded over there and they actually have eight days to go. So if you want to go uh, check that out, contribute to it and, uh, and, and, and become a part of this, uh, especially if you're here in the, in Pittsburgh or in the South Hills, it's really good. And again, check out that interview. It's a really good, awesome guys. I sat and talked to them about, with them about two hours. I, I, I couldn't get enough of them. So I went down and just to hang out with them Thursday morning and uh, and we talked about uh, you know some fun stuff, so, uh, stuff that maybe we can collaborate on some stuff and uh, and and just the you know what they're doing down there. Very interesting issues, Chilla. Here, this is an this is an idea. Um, so you know how you know you work in the corporate space and you know how mm-hmm. hard you know managing multiple OSs and keys and everything like that. What if you need to manage multiple accounts on Xbox Ones? Think about that. So you have digital, like let's say you buy a game, but now there's, there's all this DLC people want to get. Which machine is it on? How do you share accounts? How do you deal with multiplayer? When people don't have their own account, you have like a locational account or, um, or you know, some very interesting issues. And I encourage them. I hope they blog about this uh, to kind of talk about those things. It may help them. Or multi-license support and account support for like EA access, you know? Mm-hmm. So, like th- those are the kind of issues that they're having, and um, I, and, and things you wanted to think of, unless you're doing a gaming cafe like this, and it's pretty cool. So, but they're working around them. And that's that's really awesome. I, I can't wait to see how those uh, turn out and see how big these guys get. Um, also, uh, went to the note presented by Innovation Works. Uh, if you don't know, um, I think we talked about it in the past. Innovation Works is actually moving over there to the north side. If you're p- familiar with the area uh, where there used to be a mall, it is still technically there, but it's not really a mall mall. Like there's no Sears or anything like that anymore. Uh, but it's being retrofitted for startups. A friend of the show, actually, Mike Woodcheck is going to be a part of this uh, with the with Nova Center and uh, what they're doing over there. A lot of companies, I think, both the Alpha Labs are going to be moving in there. And uh, and they had a big event uh, down to New Hazel Center. It was actually they had one of the guys from Kickstarter. A lot of us went down there to check it out. And uh, there's a little video, of course, up on the uh, Twitters of uh, Doug and I and our quick impressions on the night. 
Uh, but it was really good. You know, it was interesting to compare notes to Indiegogo because a guy came from that. In both cases, it's about the maker space. This was actually the kickoffs to Maker Fair. Hey, did you know Maker Fair was last weekend? Because I didn't in advance. Because um, I've been really bad with my calendar lately. Uh, Thrival Festival like landed in my lap without knowing it too. It, literally in the back, in the back, because I was at hardware store when it went down. Um, but uh, but I think they got some really cool stuff there, and I got to talk to with some people about the plans coming up um for the for the place and basically in about 12 months that place is going to or I, actually i think at the beginning of the year they're going to start bringing stuff in there and it's going to be a really cool space right there in the north side uh so another place to consider that's not bakery square <laughs> for instance uh you know on the other side of town if you're, you happen to be south hills north side something like that uh but but i'm glad to see you know in, in, i think this is a perfect case of uh something innovative happening here in the south hills something innovative happening on the north side where you typically have not had that in either space in the city um, and, and both within city limits too, but accessible to the suburbs and everything in both directions. Cause nobody wants to cr- cross a river or go through a tunnel. Let's be honest. Um, it, your life is a lot easier if you don't have to around here. And uh, I, I think it's really cool to see those places kind of showcased in this past week. Um, and again, I think I want to talk a little bit more about that um, in, in some other spaces. Here's the truly you, chill. You have a, uh, so, yeah, I have a quick question. So, so Nova center, it's it, there, it's based out of Allegheny center. It's going to consist of alpha lab and alpha lab gear. Mm-hmm. And who else? Um, I think, well, innovation works overall. And I think there might be another incubator, uh, coming out of there as well. Are, are they going to take over the entire Allegheny Center, or they're just going to be a portion of it? Not entirely. Are you asking about PNC Bank? Yeah, uh, they are sticking around for I think another ten years, from what I understand. Okay, so uh, like, and, yeah, there's there there, I, there was talk about anchor tenants and everything, and 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 like there's them and another bank that's in there, and uh, and because there was another one that a friend of ours actually worked on worked at in the building. Um, so yeah, they are renovating a whole lot of it. Also, really surprised because the institute dorms were over there, and I, I guess they gutted the entire building. And there's like there's like a a, a grill and a a, a a a workout center and everything. We were walking by. It looks like it's really nice. There's somebody, a friend knows somebody that that lives in there and says says it's one of the best places to to to, to hang your hat. That's really cool. So hmm. that's so. very cool. North Side is transforming. It's really cool to see. So. Because I remember it was, it was it was just scary to go there before when whenever I had friends over there in the dorms for the art institute I I didn't go I you know I I just plainly didn't want to be in the dorms be, partly because of what it was like over there you know so but good to see that transformation happening and 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 and, and everything is a T ride away from us as they put stuff in there so. yes that is very true uh, the other cool thing that happened around town I went to Marvel uh, Universe Live. Um, you look like you were pretty close too. I was really close. I was four. I was four seats from the front, uh, it, it, like right in the front. Here's some pictures if you guys are on the video. Uh, actually, big thanks to you, Jagoff. Uh, he got to go to the media thing. They had an extra ticket. I was his second choice. He had like a friend's kid or nephew or something that that happened to be sick. So I was the next phone call. Uh, so I really <laughs> appreciate that. It's it's like the Marvel. Like it's, I'm guessing this is what the Disney shows are like, you know, the Indiana Jones stunt spectacular or whatever, you know, uh, and, 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 you know, of course I, the why is this here, not so much the, the, the geeky nature of this, but also the technology side. So you saw how many people there and there, there's literally stunt stuff. There's fights. There's, there's, uh, uh, there's, there's uh, guys on fire. There's, there's, there's motorbike tricks. Um, there's a giant Hulk spoilers. Sorry. Um, and, and, and everything behind them is this giant screen, like multi-layered layered video screen, and it just kind of changes to everything. And actually, there's a shot of uh, John Chamberlain uh, of jackoff.com. They gave him, so you could buy for $15 for your kids, by the way, this uh, wristband. Oh, I think I left it in my car. You gave it to me. I, so I think, I, yeah, it's in my car. So when I want to be a superhero somewhere else on the road. Um, but, it, you know, there's a part where... where um, Iron Man says, I need to power up. And then everybody's uh, little wrist thing blinks throughout the arena, you know, and, and, and does that kind of thing. So there's, there's a little bit of, uh, I don't know, I don't know what would be in there for them to do that. There's some kind of transmitter in there, right? A receiver, I guess. Like, yeah, an FC or something. Yeah, yeah. That, that at least like they could broadcast in the arena. But the cool thing was, um, you know, and I guess they're going to some places and they're having to cancel shows because the play. There's so much rigging. There's the giant wall. 
but there's also a like a giant over ceiling that happens because people are repelling off of it. There's people are like are, are attached and repelling and there's tracks up there for them to fly around or the hobgoblin sled to come out and fly around and back and everything. Uh, mm -hmm. Like that's really impressive. The set changes just happen in the space. You have somebody lit up in the front and some some scene or fight over here. And then you'll not even notice. And they set up stuff in the background. They're really good about that little bit of, um, um, uh, you know, sleight of hand. You know, look over here while we set up this big diversion. thing over here. Yeah, the, the diversion tactics and parts of this slide and transform into another thing. And these platforms will, will, will come down from the ceiling. Right. Uh, and, and hang from there. And they'll do they'll do some uh, 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 bike stunts off with them for a little bit and then it'll disappear back up in the ceiling so you can understand why some of the older arenas maybe the riggings aren't aren't can't support all that stuff because they have a lot of stuff going on up there and it was just it, it was a technical spectacle it was a, a awesome show it's goofy as all hell it's for the kids um but uh but no it was a lot of fun so what do you think of the, the storyline no storylines crap come on okay. <laughs> you're not there well, for this I'm you're not there for the storyline you're just like this you're it's one of those obvious like you're here. Storyline is happening so that we can get every character in here. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. it's like Cosmic Cube. You're all familiar because of the movie. It splits off because of some reason. And then you have bad guys over here with it. Bad guys over here with it. Wolverine's going after this guy because he's Wolverine. And he gets to do buddy cop uh, stuff with uh, Bruce Banner, who, by the way, Bruce Banner is a big motorbike uh, junkie, apparently, uh, doing tricks on there uh, before he even becomes a Hulk. So uh, it was a lot of fun. No, it, it was it was good. I, I I think the cheapest tickets were like forty five bucks. I wasn't sure if that would be worthwhile for something like this, but it, it is it is pretty good. Um, but uh, no, it was a lot of fun. It it, it it definitely feels like this is Disney's like no, oh, we know how to do these shows. Let's travel it around, and mm -hmm. uh, and I and I think it's it's worthwhile. It's for, worthwhile for anybody that's really into Marvel. There were people cosplaying. There were kids cosplaying. I felt bad Great. for the kid that dresses Batman. Um, <laughs> Uh, Dutters was was working that day, um, not not as a character. I know she's been Black Canary in the past, but uh, but uh, she said she said she saw parents cosplaying, and then the kids were just dressed normal. Hmm. So so I'm guessing it's the parents wanted to go, and the <laughs> kids gave them an excuse. Yeah. The, oh, we won't look that weird. No, <laughs> we won't. Of course, <laughs> you're dressed as Captain America. She's dressed as Black Widow. The kids just in jeans and a t-shirt. Meh. Anyways, but no, a lot of fun. Some really cool stuff happening here in town in the last week. So uh, go check that out if it's coming to your town. If you missed it, uh, so let's. Uh, hey, let's give a shout out to our friends. Of course, Slice on Broadway at sliceonbroadway.com. Uh, they're here in the South Hills of Pittsburgh. They're supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the finest in perfection of pepperoni pizza. Uh, for whenever Chilla's not in Studio B and he gets to visit <laughs> us, you know, he, he gets to partake in this or whenever he gets, you know, your kid's getting a little early, older now. It, it is, is the excuse for buying a lot of pizza for yourself with him uh, uh, floating anymore. Oh, did I lose you? What's that? Sorry. I, I said you, your excuse of uh, buying all that pizza with your kid that, that wasn't even teething yet. <laughs> Uh, is is that still floating for you? He's getting a little older. It's, it's, and, he's he actually can partake in in the majority oh. of the pizza. The only the only thing that and which is fine with me. I really like their crust. He can't he can't make it through the crust yet, but pretty much anything else we're, we're good for, especially the uh, pesto chicken pie. Ooh, that awesome. He's a big fan of that. That's great. So go check him out. Sliceonbroadway.com. Uh, PGH underscore slice on the Twitters and look for slice on Broadway on Facebook and on Instagram. You'll get hungry too. Let them know you heard about us, heard about them on us at Awesome Cast. <laughs> Hell, well, I don't know what happened there. All right, we have some apps of the week. Hopefully, this one is loaded so I can show it off a little bit. But we do also actually let's give that another second. We do have one uh, email to share with you and uh it's from our boy alex cars out there in california uh and some stuff that he's been checking with he's always uh kind of uh chiming in with uh what he's uh getting into graphics wise especially he's a bit of a graphic artist out there uh check him out if you're looking for work and you're around the uh la area greater la area i guess i don't know my geography very well all of california i feel like you could drive to that is not the case holy crap uh, but he says, hey guys, this won't be quite as detailed as the last one, but I've been playing around with some Adobe apps again in light of the changes and new, the, and new apps made. 
Uh, here are some pictures of things I've made using Photoshop Mix, um, Photoshop Fix, and Adobe Comp. So uh, he's got, if you guys are on video, so he's got a little bit of a, a, a screenshot from Sonic 2 and looks like he put a moon and fireworks in there. So uh, that's probably the uh, mix thing. A uh, little bit of the comp, uh, Sonic 2 with some lips and orum on it. And uh, he put uh, Knuckles in, in, a, in a picture of, of a house, of a cabin in the woods, <laughs> it looks like. And, uh, and there's him. Oh, he's, he made himself smile. I see. <laughs> so that's awesome. The, the, these... these um, these uh, 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 Photoshop apps look like they're pretty interesting. I'm trying to figure out the workflow, again, graphics-wise. And actually, I did see an article. I didn't get uh, to take a deep dive into it about how this was kind of creating a new kind of kind of creative professional that's working on these devices. Because I'm thinking about just general graphics work. and like, who is just needing to do this stuff in these apps? But I guess there's probably people that that fits into. Uh, he also says, I, I, to finish the email, I'll get to you, Chilla. I, I really enjoy being able to be, to do, uh, re- I really enjoy being able to almost do real, quote, Photoshopping with Mix. Now you can even get more than two layers to work with, as he showed off with the moon and the fireworks there. Uh, and Fix, that's the biggest smile I've ever been able to, quote, make. And Adobe Comp is a nice way to make a layout drafts. Uh, for a design work. Again, drafting stuff. You're going to make, take a deeper dive on a real program on a computer, I bet. Uh, so there you go. Thank you, Alex, for checking that out. Jilla? Where, where I feel like this really fits in is you, you hear more and more a lot of the the newspaper writers and the news type newscast um, a lot of their cameras being replaced with, with iPhones or their editing laptops being created or replaced with an iPad. Mm -hmm. That's where I could see a lot of this coming into play. Um, Maybe as a a writer, you're not full on savvy with Photoshop, but you just need to adjust brightness, contrast, whatever. Um, Certain tones, maybe cut out some blue tones, some of the easier stuff, um, and then plop that into... um, a draft engine and then pass that over to your editor. Who's then going to take it from there. Right. Um, obviously that I feel like in the days of Twitter, the news has to respond extremely fast. If they're going to, if they're going to get the, get the clicks for the story. So I think this just gets that oh. type of worker. I like that. They're that much faster. Because I we are seeing so you're talking about the news, you're talking about blogging, you're you know, that mm-hmm. kind of thing that, that needs to be responsive. Yeah, and how many of those because I, I, I listen to Andy Anako, Chicago Sun Times, so he's a real writer, right? Uh, mm-hmm. and he talks about how he uh, a lot of times converts and has for tried for bits and pieces, and I think he settled into the latest MacBook. Uh, MacBook One, as I think somebody was calling it on another podcast, somebody <laughs> told me about. Uh, but uh, but but you know that whole idea of you could do if you're a writer, if you're just doing that part of media, um, and you just need some quick image help. Yeah, you can really streamline it. So so I guess I, I guess it kind of yeah fits into something like that. I, you know, me I'm always thinking higher level because I'm doing video and I'm I see the massive limitations of these things, except for maybe an iPad Pro. Let's hope one day we can uh, experiment with that. Uh, you know, let's be honest. I'll have an iPad Pro sometime within the next five years. It's, that's <laughs> let's let's be completely honest about this. Well, yeah, and, and that's, that's where that's, that's where I think they're they're taking it to that next level of people want to don't want to carry eight bazillion devices with them. They don't want to carry the phone, the tablet, the laptop, the the everything, right? And back to the earlier comment of people need to get that media out quicker. Mm-hmm. Um. So even, I think, even from the standpoint of I need to take this video and I need to download it off the, the video into a video editor, then I need to actually do, just to do some basic tweaks with maybe throwing in, I don't know, a, a bottom quarter name panel and adding some transi- very minor transitions between a couple cuts and, and trimming down some some. Ed- some some video i think the more that you can do it on the device you shot it on um really takes the time and and get allows you to get it out there much faster right right 
and, and that's the thing. I mean, I mean for you. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say, I mean, think about it for you, right? If, if, if you could take it direct from the camcorder or from whatever you're recording on and, and do some minor tweaks and then get it published out there. I mean, what kind of time, what, think about the time that saves you and you can be working with the next customer. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And I'm even thinking about that, you know, we've talked about touch, touch cast here on the show mm-hmm. and, um, you know, it's really like the studio in the box on your iPad as it is. You know, I just wish I had a better iPad to work with it, right? So that it would do the green screen a little more heavy, right? Um, like you could completely do the full on thing right there on your iPad. Boom, you're done, right? Mm-hmm. Um, actually, now I have a big green screen that I can use. We should play with that a little bit. Hmm. Anyways, that's a whole other thing. Uh, but 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 no, I I think uh, the the yeah, it really kind of accounts to that 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 flow, and I, and I know you know the comparisons are always made to, you know, these iPads and iPad Pros to the Surface or the new Android Pixel wait, Pixel, was that was that the one? The, yes. Yeah, Chromebook the, Pixel. The new- yeah. Um, you know, and and how product to, pr- productive you are with it. You know, it depends on what you're doing. It's not going to be for everybody. And I think uh, anytime it's like, well, I can't use that. That's not, it's worthless. So like, maybe not to you, you know, but I think that most of the people that are just doing stuff on the web, but then again, people are just doing stuff on the web. Maybe they don't need something that high end too. So. Well, and, and I look at it as that the people today, and, and you, I was surprised that, that I'm, we're still seeing drops in PC shipments. Mm-hmm. Um, either someone, I think it's now to the point where either someone's playing with numbers or, or they're trying to recategorize things or, or something because I, I think, I think to the point of the basic user, like our, our parents or, or whoever, whoever's sitting on the couch in the evening, I think we're past the days of the need for most people to have a laptop desktop. I can get, I can buy a subscription for my from my TV. I can buy a subscription for unlimited music. I can buy um, a subscription for some photo editing, and from there, I have my tablet. And my tablet is my gateway to all my social networks. It's my gateway to the web, and that's where I think to the point of the more we can streamline some of the processing, even for for the light touch. Uh, photo editing like we were talking about i think you're going to get them everyone's going to get down to that more singular device right exactly all right uh so let's take a look at your app of the week here chilla looks like you got a fun and uh rather uh timely one with some of the celebrations coming up so yes jetpack joyride an an old-time favorite um has turned their time circus on and they actually have kind of an overlay that adds in a lot of back to the future um, type stuff. And it actually allows you to earn the more flux, flux capacitors you, you get um, the more pieces that you unlock and get to keep. Um, if you're, if you're someone who doesn't necessarily want to have to earn all the, the unlocks um, you can, I think pay $20 and it'll actually let you let you unlock and, and keep all of the stuff. There's a lot of different suits. You can be Marty McFly. You can be Biff Tannen. You can be Doc Brown. Um, they have the hoverboard as, as a as a um, item that you can ride on. They have the DeLorean. Um, they're, if you can keep the DeLorean under control until you get up to 88 miles per hour, it allows you to, to skip a large portion of the level. Um, they have the backgrounds, so there's different backgrounds that look like um, – it was a Hill Valley in 1955 and Hill Valley in, in 2015. Um, so yeah, it's, it, I'm having a lot of fun with it and it's a good, good way to break up some monotony and some of the other games I'm playing while, while I'm waiting for, um, my, my tokens to recharge or, or more moves over time. Some of the other games I play. So yeah, go check it out. It's a lot of fun. If you like Jetpack Joyride before, um, you'll definitely like this, this new edition, and I just saw the DeLorean fly by there on the mm-hmm. video. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> I think I'm keeping this one on here. I haven't played this for a while since uh, I had it on the iPad, actually. So, uh, so awesome. Go check out Jet 
Pack Joyride. It's a free game, and it's one of those kind of freemium-ish ones that, that does a recharging and everything you said. So so it doesn't it doesn't necessarily recharge it, what it is is you can play it as often as you like but you do have to you you have it actually to me is a is a step up from freemium because from what i've seen you can earn anything that you could pay for as well if so it's more do you want to earn the stuff that you, earn the little tweaks or do you want to to pay for them so it kind of gives you gives you both options but you're not going to miss anything by not paying well, if I can share for a moment the uh, fun, weird... Th- oh, I crashed. Never mind. I was going to say, I've been playing a little <laughs> bit of Tomb Raider, the original. Um, so it, it's on there. I think it was like a couple bucks or it was on sale when I got it. So like the PlayStation 1 Tomb Raider <laughs> we're talking about. Oh, man, is it different than what I'm playing on the Xbox? But anyways. All righty. On that note, uh, hey, want to give a shout out. Uh, shout out to some new people, some new heroes in town. Uh <laughs> <laughs> so uh you, you might like what we're doing here uh on 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 sorgatron media on our podcasting our videos maybe you're enjoying uh sawtooth willie had a new one where he's got some gifts from some fans please go check out sawtooth willie on sorgatron media.com but we got a new thing coming it's right in preview mode right now but it's the place that you're going to go if you need some help with the video if you need some help getting your podcast going we're going to have some education services and some classes and some courses and some webinars coming up here. You want to go to SidekickMediaServices.com uh, at, on Twitter at SidekickMediaCo. And also you can check us out, Sidekick Media uh, Services, on the Facebook. It's the one with that Batman-looking logo going on there and uh, with the great Pittsburgh skyline. Uh, so this is this is what we've been getting to this is why i've been awkwardly selling our services through uh our, our old name here the last few weeks um but this is our our new face of uh of 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 doing doing things for other people basically and uh if you need help with a uh, video content so- social media we do all of that kind of stuff and uh we want to help you uh get your story out there go go check out sidekickmediaservices.com sign up and uh, and let us know what you let me know what you what you need a hand with, and uh, and we're gonna have a lot more coming from there very very soon. So let's take a look at last week on Sorgatron Media. Is that your dog? Yeah. Is it a tiny a tiny dog? Yeah, it's a, it's a long haired ball. Bring it to me. No. Why? I want to put something in my mouth. No. Why does uh, my PS4 keep downloading Barbie Horse Adventure? What you're telling me is that. PS4 has turned into TiVo, yeah. which means at some point you're gonna watch Super Redneck Trucker. It's <laughs> yes. gonna be like, oh, we downloaded every episode of Queer as Folk for you. What is on Katie's face? The Galaxy Gear VR, mm-hmm. which is made by Samsung in partnership with Oculus. There's going to be a consumer version that comes out. Um, I think this is to get developers thinking on how they can build their apps and how things work. Tell us, what is the concept? What is Looking for Group? It's a mixed co-working and gaming space. Pay by the hour to play on Xbox Ones, PlayStation 4s we use, or PCs. Aska? Is that how we're saying it? WWE's doing one thing right, because Japanese pronunciation, you never pronounce the U. Okay, Mm. but it's Aska. Asuka. Asuka. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I can't wait until she needs Dana Brooke in the eye and gives her a little bit of or whatever. <laughs> 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 Again, check out all that stuff at sorgatronmedia.com and all of our affiliates. A lot of geeky stuff, a lot of stuff we're doing for our clients currently. I uh, hope you're uh, enjoying a lot of that. And, and and check out more shows. Share whatever you dig. Just ignore everything else, will you? Uh, so let's get into uh, We have some other stories from the week that we've, we've been uh, kind of interested in. Uh, so I, I want to get to this nucleus thing that you got, Chilla. So, so this caught my eye. Um there's a new company called Nucleus, and their goal is to make video conferencing easier. Um, I didn't think video conferencing was really all that difficult, but then again, I use it with a lot of of younger people. Um, and anytime I need to to FaceTime with with 
someone from the older generations of the family, I do end up having to call them on the phone and then say, hey, go over and grab your iPad. I'm going to send you a FaceTime invite, blah, 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 blah. So this device is, is solely based around the concept of video conferencing. Um, it kind of works in two different manners. It has the in-house intercom type system where you can just say, call the living room. Um, and it will, in fact, call the device in your house that, that is in the living room. Um, obviously, you have to set up what room is what and what, which device is in which room. But it uses the same kind of technology as, as Sonos, where it kind of creates that mesh network around your house. Um, same thing as, as kind of like the Chrome, Chromecast audio, um, things of that nature. Um, the one thing they do really tout is the, the voice recognition. So if you're familiar with Amazon Echo, it's going to be kind of along the same lines of that. Um, and then leaving, obviously, you can not just call around your house, but you can spread these devices out amongst family members or, or, um, or whatever. So I'm pretty impressed with the device. I think it's a great idea. It does kind of give your device it, it, one thing that it does, and I'm sure, therefore, it's going to do it extremely well. Um, I'm hoping I could hand this to a grandparent um, and make that connection a lot easier, almost like it's another device just like their home phone. Um, and, and that's kind of how I view it. If, if you have a family member that still has a home phone and that's your primary way that you contact them, that I would think this kind of would be the device for for them. Um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with it. I, I, I'd like to see it in action. I'm hoping you can, hoping they have these devices sooner or later at a Best Buy or something where you can kind of give it a whirl. Um, but pre-orders start, start at $209.00. Um, it's forty dollars less than the two hundred and fifty dollar price tag um, that you'll that you'll be expected to pay um, when they're released in the spring of twenty sixteen. Well, there you go. Go check it out. It's the future, man. I mean, this is this is kind of the Back to the Future thing. I think Demolition Man a little bit uh, when we're talking about video phones and stuff. Which well, I think we talked about it on here before. Video phones are here, man. It's FaceTime. It's it's it's, it's everything. Yeah. You know, it's Skype. It's FaceTime. It's Hangout. Um, it was funny cause when you called me before my computer actually rang, <laughs> I had an iPad, a, an Android phone and my iPhone all lit up and rang. And then the computer rang like 10 seconds later. Right. So, right. But that's where I, I, I like the intercom style. And that's one of the things that I've been actually looking and thinking about doing here at the house is putting an intercom in a couple of the rooms. And this might be a more interesting alternative um, than doing that. I'm interested to see, will they come up with like a computer app? Um, they already, they're already going to integrate with Nest smart things and eye control. So it'll be interesting to see how that works. Um, I don't know. It, it's kind of like that build on your home automation tool set. Right, right. Interesting. So go check it out. Uh, it's uh, nucleuslife.com is actually where, where, where it lives. So uh, be interesting to check that out, Chilla. So, uh, well, you know, let's, uh, I want to touch on this interesting article I saw. Uh, this is actually from Quartz. I, I don't know what Quartz is. It's, it, apparently, it's something that uh, uh, Apple News thinks I should read. Um, and, and I'm glad it did because this is a really interesting story. So uh, this there's this uh, article about a man who recorded every detail of his life for five years and his ultimate way to live in the moment. And, and I've, read, I've actually come to a lot of articles lately about what our Internet does to our brain, whether it's good or bad, that our memories aren't as good as they, they have been or that really, you know, it's actually helping us. And maybe our, 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 our memories were crap anyways, for the most part. Uh, and, and this was an interesting kind of study on that. So, so he basically had a, uh, a device that took a picture. I think it was every 30 seconds a, 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 as part of it. And, uh, and again, it, 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 you know, he talks about how deep seated anxiety affects afflicts modern life. And it, 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 it makes a picture like this go viral. And there's like a little grandmother in the middle of this crowd here right uh you know just little things like that and in the little things um the part where his wife said august really just flew by didn't he? he says no it didn't and then and then go back to see everything that they did right 
and I know, and Chill, I don't know if you have this. I mean, you're in a whole other space. So you have a kid and, 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 and your job and everything, uh, a more typical nine to five job than I do, I know. And, and, but, you know, that passage of time, and this is something that we discuss on some of our mindfulness stuff. You know, like, oh, this really flew by, and before you know, it's over. Um, and looking back on my calendar and, like, you know, the stuff that we went over at the beginning of the, the show and how much I didn't even realize, if it wasn't for social media, I went back and I found all those pictures in my timeline, right? And Mm -hmm. and I think I barely remember what happened this past weekend because I'm still working towards working towards working towards the next thing. And this idea that he can literally take the last very much so the last five years and see a lot of moments that have maybe passed his brain. Right. Uh, I was just on a podcast, Red Horse Radio um, with John Towers, and we did a lot of kind of uh, talking about how I got to certain points in my career, things I haven't thought about for a long time. And, and that it was cool to have that and jog your memory. But again, a lot of that is really, um, journaled on the internet, right? Like, like you can go back and see my history on face or MySpace still, if you really wanted to, you know, you know, things like that. And, 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 or, or go back and, and you, you've done this. I'm sure Chilla, since you, you're, you've been on iPhone for a bit and look back and say, you know, to the moments and seeing that collage of pictures and how far back it goes and, and, and kind of getting that or say, Hey, give me pictures from last Thursday, you know, or last August. Um, I was playing with this as I was looking for a specific pictures, uh, to use for another project. And I was like, okay, my Instagram says it was this. And I was trying to find bigger pictures of it. So I am able to type into Google photos and say, um, give me photos from 17 weeks ago, you know, and we're able to catalog that all those experiences, um, I don't know. What do you think about this? Uh, I, I think it's, it's phenomenal. One of the, the things that I've looked at is, you know, how do you kind of do this? I've seen the different, and I think we've reviewed or talked about, not necessarily reviewed in our hands, but the different kind of life cams that either go on the lapel or they go on your baseball cap or whatever. Um, I've always wondered, like, how do you get it at that good point of view that you're going to kind of capture everything. Um, and one of the things to, to, to your point with, so this with social media, mm-hmm. I mean, between, um, Facebook now kind of has a look back. Um, we obviously have time hop. Um, my favorite thing even today, now that I've, I've started to actually upload my entire photo history up into, into Google photo because it's primarily cause it's free. Mm-hmm. Um, I, they're giving me rem- remember this last year, remember this two years ago, three years ago, X years ago. Um, obviously I wasn't using Google photo back then. Um, I wasn't even not, I wasn't even always using a phone, but even from my DSLR and other things, it's pulling in all that content. Right. Um, so, so, Will it, I, will it help me live in the moment? Maybe not as much because I'm still going to be, I feel like I would still get sidetracked with, I need to make sure that the people I'm with are in the frame and I'm getting everyone. You know what I mean? You're too much of a photography perfectionist <laughs> is what you're saying. Well, yes. this is, and, and this was a discreet camera that he wore. Uh, that he only, actually it was only a couple years ago that he started doing this. I think I said a, a conference of 2013. He discovered it, and it, it was took a picture every 30 seconds for 12 hours a day. And and uh, and the other interesting part was this logbook that he kept. Actually, uh, he he developed this system uh, where he logged his day, and it even uh, let's see how did they put it. It even was searchable because of the way he formatted it. Uh, your extra tags that come up on the day, uh, uh, keywords that capture the day and getting added to the index, notes from meeting people, summary of all the things he did that day. And, and it looks like it looks like just kind of notes here, 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 words here, words here, but it all kind of comes together. And it, they, they also break it down a little bit more, you know, talking about what one, you, they, they took the proportional words and images from his life log and say how many objects, people, locations, actions, and the actions were the biggest things in the log book. Um, and, and kind of what they compared to the camera. And this is all kind of relating to quanti- quantified self 
and and you know which we're getting you know uh, how much did i walk you know i like the feature a few years ago and, I, and they took it down it used to be google latitude and i'm sure there's something in maps i can turn it on with my phone again uh but i, I haven't checked where that is but i like that it told me where i drove and how far i drove and especially when i was doing a lot of work you know i was doing that series a couple years ago uh where i was going and interviewing people all across the city and, and and I did a lot of road time with that. I discovered a lot of new places, and sometimes out of out of the city. And, and at the time, I was traveling a lot to New York City. I was traveling up to uh, Western New York for family. I was traveling home. I was traveling to Ohio for wrestling shows. Um, I don't really get out of the city too much anymore, Chilla. Uh, at least like I don't really get out of Southwestern PA much anymore, unfortunately. Uh, and and but but back then, so it's just kind of like the little squiggle lines in one place. But but it was I liked following that. I was like, oh wow, I did a lot of driving driving that time, you know. Uh, and it really kind of gives you a little bit of perspective, I think. So it's interesting. I think I saw. I think I saw in my feed to in the last couple of days on on Google Photo, like was New York City Comic Con a couple of years back. Some some photography I did for someone I think five or six years ago. So I, I do. Re- I, I'm actually looking at the narrative now, which is the camera he was using. I, I'm, I'm definitely interested in this, but to the point I was making earlier, it's, it's interesting to see. You know, are people going to look at you odd because of the, the whole Google Glass thing? Well, it's or discreet. it's discreet though. You're, you're, but I don't yeah, think anybody going to notice this camera the way they have it. Mm-hmm. So and and how do you make sure you get people in frame? But I don't think you worry about it. I think it's just life. Look at the pictures that he's got there. It's just things that happen. There are bathroom pictures in here somewhere. And hopefully <laughs> he's like tagged them or something like that. You know, he's obviously not putting these public or anything like that. So, um, but, but there are, there certainly are. There's certainly, there, there's certainly life pictures that are probably not things he wants out there. Or maybe he was very careful about it for 12 hours a day. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe covered it. Maybe he knows we t- covered it. But I don't know. It's interesting. It's very interesting. It's not about, it's not about the, the chill. It's not about the the quality of the pictures. It's about the memories that they preserve. Mm-hmm. And I, and I do, do definitely understand that. Mm-hmm. All right, Sheila. I think on that note, we need to get out of here. We got to get off and uh, let the guys talk about some video games here on Boss Battle with InsertCoinToBegin.com. Chilla, it's always been fun. At Chilla on the Twitters, we got some Ch- events. Are we through all the events go- coming up here? I, I, I I'm not even sure. <sighs> I. Th- Everybody said their piece, right? <laughs> I think everyone's. I think everyone's talked. I think it's until after Christmas that um, that we'll be hearing more. I, I think isn't there a podcasting event coming up in DC? Is a uh, uh, yeah uh, DC Podfest. Uh, actually, uh, you were just listening to uh, does this hold up? And I and that's that was I, I queued it up while I was waiting between shows here as well. Awesome guys over there, uh, friends of the show. But on this show, uh, they're actually going to be at Podfest, DC Podfest. Um, so we should look into that. We should, I don't know if I'm going to make it to DC, but but uh, you know there there was PodCon this past week through Blab.im. They had a lot of big names on there. Uh, so uh, go check that video out. Or they seem to have a lot of trouble. I have not had that much trouble with Blab.im, but they seem to be. Uh, so the podcasting thing, and 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 and, and you know. There's a lot of events happening all over, some Midwest ones, and uh, I don't know. We, 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 should, we, should, uh, we should get ourselves there and, and see what's going on and see if we can grow a little bit and, and network a bit too. So uh, so with that, guys, awesomecast.net, live.sorgatronmedia.com. Every Tuesday we get started between 6.30 and 7 o'clock Eastern time. A lot of times I've been doing interviews for Awesome Chat about 5 p.m. Keep an eye on the Twitters for information on that and our Facebook uh, we actually have invites uh, for the uh, for the podcast day, and I usually try to uh, stick a couple notes on there if there's anything special, guests or anything like that going on. Uh, and please, uh, as always, check out the Patreon, patreoncom slash cast. And, uh, and thank you everybody for joining us in the chat room. It's a great chat room uh, going on all night. Is that say Chilla the first? Yeah, I I needed another name instead of what was it calling me. <laughs> I can't remember. It was some woman's name. Uh, it's always women's names. It's very interesting. So, <laughs> uh, you can you can get misnamed and join us there as well. Uh, as I mentioned, live at sorgatronmedia.com. At Chill on the Twitters. I'm at Sorgatron. Thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. 
Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.